Thank you for joining us for this practice update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Joining me today is Dr. Hope Rugo, Professor of Medicine and Director of Breast Oncology Clinical Trials Program at UCSF. So fantastic to have you on, Dr. Rugo. It's great to be here. Now, focusing our discussion on triple negative breast cancer, what are your thoughts on adding adjuvant capacitamine in patients with residual disease after neoadjuvant chemotherapy? Well, the CREATE-X trial really has brought this to the forefront. We've always been interested in what we can do, in particular for patients with triple negative breast cancer who don't have more treatment options, after they have finished neoadjuvant therapy and have surgery, if they have residual disease. Patients who have uh, no cancer left in the breast and lymph node do very well, although it's not universally that they will be cured of their cancer. The relapses are very uncommon. Uh, if you do develop metastatic disease with triple negative breast cancer, you have a reasonably short median survival. So this is an area of great interest. Um, you know, for some patients who have aggressive ER positive disease, that's also an issue where the relapse rates can be high. So there have been trials looking at this, none of which have been positive, but a trial looked specifically just at capecitabine in patients with residual disease after neoadjuvant therapy and was performed in Japan and Korea called CREATE-X. And they randomized patients to either not get capecitabine or to get capecitabine at a higher dose than usually uh, people in the U.S. tolerate, certainly. And uh, we know that the metabolism of the drug is different in uh, some Asian patients than in non-Asian patients, so there may mm -hmm. be that. But they gave eight cycles of capecitabine and then stopped and they followed these patients for both disease-free and overall survival and showed that not only did the women who took capecitabine have less relapses, but they also lived longer. It's a very impressive data. And then they looked at subsets and found that patients with triple negative breast cancer appeared to be the subset that were benefiting more than patients with ER positive disease. So that was quite intriguing. And I think, you know, we've really looked at the data. It's not published yet. It's been presented. People have looked at the data in a little bit more detail and looked at some other studies to try and see if we could take mm -hmm. out bits and pieces and understand this better. But I think that Given that we have no options, using capecitabine is a reasonable option for a patient who has significant residual disease. So I'm not talking about somebody who has a millimeter or two, of course. but significant residual disease because their relapse risk in the next two years is so very high. Have you started incorporating this into your clinical practice? So we do use capecitabine in patients who have a lot of residual disease now. It seems like there's, you know, randomized trial data, albeit not published. Don't give it to everybody. Of so, course. And I give it primarily to patients with triple negative disease, not ER positive. Yes. And are you routinely using platinum agents in patients with TNBC, irrespective of BRCA status? Well, you know, there's data showing improved pathologic complete responses, but in the U.S. trial, which had the uh, U.S. randomized trial, which had the chemotherapy regimen most similar to what we all normally do, there was no difference in disease-free survival, and it does cause decreased blood counts and a little more nausea. So I don't give uh, cap I don't give uh, carboplatin or cisplatin as a routine uh, additive drug, but I do give it for patients who are, for example, poor responders or not responders in the neoadjuvant setting to our standard treatments. Um, and I'm very interested in an ongoing cooperative group trial, which is randomizing women with residual disease to either receive the platinum of physician choice versus capecitabine. Sure. So that's, I think, an incredibly important trial. In a patient who's already had prior chemotherapy, has a recurrence of triple negative disease, but it's still curable, I usually give a taxane plus a platinum. Okay. Is there any other new promising data that may give hope to patients with triple negative disease? Well, you know, they've sort of been a beleaguered group, you know, without new data. But we now do have, we have created X for post-neoadjuvant therapy. But I think most importantly, it's an era of immunotherapy. We're looking at immune checkpoint inhibitors, and we're also looking at combinations of immune, immune active drugs. So one drug that might sort of goose up the immune system, and then you come with a checkpoint inhibitor so that yes. it can unleash the immune system on the cancer after it's already been amplified. So that, that's work going on, and there's a lot of excitement about that in triple negative breast cancer. And of course, the in the BRCA uh, patients, patients who have BRCA uh, germline mutations, uh, there are two PARP inhibitor trials that will complete accrual next year, mm -hmm. and the Olympiab trial, it's already completed accrual, will pro we're hopefully report at ASCO. So we'll see some data very soon. So some multi-targeted synergies that may yes. happen. 
And Excellent. I think that's exciting. You know, we're yes, already moving is. them into the early stage setting, yes. so we'll get information fairly quickly. That's fantastic. Strong yeah. science. Absolutely. We're hoping for more. Thank you so very much for joining us again for Practice Update. And again, we hope to see you very soon. Thank you. To our viewers, thank you for joining us for this Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula here with Dr. Hope Rugo.